everyone, Michael here with Mainline. I'm going to show you how to set up Allen & Heath's ZI Series Compact Hybrid Mixer for live streaming performance. What I mean by hybrid mixer is that this is an analog mixer that accepts inputs from microphones, guitars, keyboards, you name it. But it also has a built-in 4x4 USB interface that plugs directly into your computer and shows up as a sound card. I have a ZI-10FX here. I've taken it out of the box, I've plugged in the power. The next thing I want to do is what we call zeroing out the board. Basically what that means is we're going to clear all the settings and start with a blank slate. So starting from the top, I want to turn all of my gain knobs all the way down counterclockwise. I want to check these two sets of buttons. There's a line pad button and a low cut button on each channel. I want to make sure these are all raised or disengaged. Then moving down, I have the EQ section. I want to turn all of my EQ knobs to center 12 o'clock. There's a little indentation that you'll feel when you get there that tells you where the zero position is. And then I have my aux and effects sin knobs. I want to turn all of those down all the way counterclockwise. And then I have my pan controls. I want to turn all these to the center. And again, there's an indentation telling you where the zero position is. And then I have my mix levels. I want to turn all of these knobs all the way down counterclockwise. And I also want to turn down all of my master knobs and my stereo channel knobs. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the master fader and set that to zero, which is also known as unity or nominal. Now that we've zeroed out our board, it's time to connect some inputs. This mixer has four mic line inputs, which have XLR jacks for microphones, as well as quarter inch TRS line level inputs. This mixer has a really cool feature on the first two channels that allows us to directly connect a guitar. When we connect our guitar to the quarter inch input on channels one or two, and then enable this button that has a guitar icon next to it, the impedance is matched on the input perfectly to a guitar. It's just like having a DI built into your console. After the first four channels, we have two stereo channels with dual quarter inch line level inputs. Now I have a microphone, one guitar, and a stereo keyboard. So I'll plug my microphone into channel one, the XLR input, and then I'll plug my guitar into the quarter inch input of channel two, and I'll press the guitar button. And then I'll take my two quarter inch from my stereo keyboard and plug those into stereo channel one, left and right. Now the only thing I have left to connect is a USB cable to my computer. If you had a PA system or a floor monitor, you could connect those to the main out XLR outputs or the quarter inch TRS aux out. Now that we've got all our inputs connected, it's time to set our input gain levels. Now this isn't where we're gonna create the balance of our mix. We'll get to that part in a minute. What we wanna do here is bring in enough level to give us a good signal to noise ratio, but not too much so as to avoid clipping and distortion. So down here at the bottom of channel one, we see this headphone icon with a button next to it. If we press that button, this is what we call a PFL or pre-fade listen. It's gonna take channel one's isolated audio and route it to our headphones for monitoring. But what it's also gonna do is route channel one to our eight segment LED meter over here on the right side of the mixer, which is very important for setting our initial levels. So with someone singing on the mic, we're gonna gradually bring up the gain of channel one until we're hitting about zero, but not going over. We can see when we pass zero, the LEDs turn yellow, and if we keep going farther, they'll turn red. So we wanna land right around zero, and that looks like a good level there. Once I've got my level, I'll disengage the PFL button and repeat the process for the guitar and the keyboard channels. Now that we've got all our input levels set, let's take a look at what processing is available on this mixer. Below the gain knobs, we see a row of buttons called low cut. When we enable this, it'll roll off the low frequency energy that we might not need in our microphones. It's common practice to enable this by default on vocal microphones because there's not much low frequency information below 100 hertz in the human voice. And then we have our blue knobs, which are our EQ. 
Our first four channels have three bands of EQ, a high, a mid, and a low frequency adjustment. Turning them clockwise will give you more high frequencies or mid frequencies, low frequencies. And turning them counterclockwise will lower the levels of those bands. And then we have our aux level sends. Our aux is a secondary mix that we send to a floor monitor or some other destination that needs a different balance than our main output. And then we have our effects sends. This is where we determine what level we send from each channel to our effects engine. We can select what type of effects here in the center with this touch and turn knob. And then we can bring our effects into the mix with this effects to mix knob. Below the effects sends, we have the pan knob. This controls the placement of each channel in our stereo image left to right. And then we have our mix sends. This is where we'll adjust the balance of our main mix. So now the last thing left to do is to open up our streaming software, select Z as our audio interface and start streaming. That's it for this episode. Be sure to like and share this video. And if you're ready to take your live online performances to the next level, get in touch with us today at MainlineMarketing.com.